Hey friends, welcome back. Today, I wanna to help you figure out how to find the right OBGYN for you. I'm gonna cover some great tips, so stay tuned. So I get lots of messages every day, messages, emails, that kind of thing, comments here. And one that I've been seeing over and over again is when you ask me, how do I find an OBGYN? And so today I wanna go through different things to think about when it comes to picking out your OBGYN. In the first part, I'm gonna cover how to find a doctor, you know, an OBGYN in general. In the second half, what I'll do is I'll cover specific to pregnancy. First things first, when you're deciding on your doctor is you wanna think, does male or female matter to you? Some people are really, really, really sure that they do not want a male OBGYN. Having said that, I have trained with and I myself have had male OBGYNs and I think they're great. So it's not because they're a guy that they can't be a good OBGYN. So if that's something that's really important to you and you want to specifically have, say, just a female, for example, then you're going to want to look for a practice that has females only. And this is because sometimes doctors cover each other. Really, this applies to pregnancy. So if you're delivering and you happen to come in and the doctor who's on that day is a male, then that's who's delivering your baby. Just to clarify, I think that guys can make fabulous OBGYNs, but this is just something, a question that I've gotten repeatedly, so I wanted to address it. Second thing, is it important for you to always make sure that you're seeing your doctor? If it is, then you're going to want to look for a practice that is only that doctor. If you primarily want to stick with one doctor, but in a pinch you're okay with seeing somebody else, then a group practice setting might be okay with you. And you can ask that when you are calling and making an appointment and saying, I see there are three doctors in this practice and I, I want to stick with my doctor. How often does it happen that you know, my doctor could get called away to a delivery, for example, or to have to do an emergency surgery, and one of her partners will cover. And the front desk can kind of let you know how often that happens. Okay, how easy is it to schedule an appointment? I think it's really important to look into this when you're picking a gynecologist for you. Do you get stuck waiting on the phone for an hour? Do you have to schedule a full six months or 12 months out to get in because they're so booked? It may not seem like that big a deal, but when I've been on the other end of that and I've had to wait on hold for an hour or I just cannot get through and the communication is not great, it bothers me and yeah, I'm not likely to return to that practice. So figure out, can you schedule appointments online? Can you do communication via text and through electronic messaging on your phone? It can actually make accessing your doctor and rescheduling appointments and that kind of thing a lot easier. So that might be something you wanna look into to see if your potential physician's office offers that. So maybe the most important thing I can suggest is what's the word on the street? So let's say you've just moved somewhere, you need to make your annual appointment, how do you go about finding somebody? I think a great way to figure out kind of what the word is on the street and what the vibe is, is to ask around. So ask your friends, ask your primary care doctor who they might refer to or who they go themselves. And this is my favorite little tidbit, call labor and delivery. And I'm talking about even if you're not pregnant, you can call labor and delivery and you can ask the nurses and say, hey, who do you all go for your OBGYN care? Because they know how their doctors work. They see them day in, day out. They see them in the most craziest of situations, and they're gonna know who they would want to take care of them, and that insight is invaluable. So do not hesitate to call labor and delivery and just cold call and say, you know, I'm looking for a gynecologist, or I just found out I was pregnant and I need an OBGYN. Anybody you might recommend, and they, they will tell you. When it comes to online reviews, I wanna tell you to be careful because there are really two types of people who do online reviews. Those who have had a fantastic experience and want to tell the entire world and those who've had a terrible experience and want to tell the entire world. And both of those groups probably make up maybe, I don't know, five to 10% of all patient encounters. The vast majority of people, myself included, rarely go online to be like, yeah, my doctor was great and everything was fine. And yeah, I would totally recommend them. Like we just don't tend to be that proactive unless something's really awesome or really not awesome. Sometimes reviews can get falsified too. So for example, if somebody really doesn't like vaccines and they, a pediatrician in town is you know discussing vaccines well they might activate a whole group behind the scenes to go and completely trash their reviews yes it happens and it sucks so online reviews can be good but do take them with a grain of salt you can look at a practice's website too to get an idea of their general vibe so for example you can see is their website even updated do they have extra information on surgeries that they offer procedures you can sometimes get an idea of how up to date a practice is and then potentially their physicians are by looking at their website that is always with the caveat that not every practice that might be amazing has an amazing website, but it can help guide you and you can get a vibe. You can see what the doctors, their particular interests are in, if they've got focuses in areas like endometriosis or adolescent health or 
you know, contraception, that kind of thing, or menopause care. Um, sometimes they'll have even additional educational materials on their website, and that gives you another idea of how good they are at educating and involving their patients in discussions. So that can be a nice way to see. And if they're on social media, I think that's awesome too, because you can, again, get an inside look at what their office looks like, who the office staff is, and just really kind of see how they are when it comes to communicating. So that can be a really nice inside peek too. But again, don't discredit a practice if they don't have a social media presence. Some just don't, and it doesn't mean that they're not offering good care. Another thing to look at is, is your gynecologist board certified or board eligible? What that means is they have completed their residency training and they've passed both a written board exam and an oral board exam. These are very vigorous tests and it means that they are then certified, board certified by the American Board of OBGYN, which holds us to very strict standards. And once we get that certification, we have to maintain it every year as we practice. So we have to continue to stay up to date on articles, answer questions, do those kinds of things. Now, if your physician is not yet board certified, it mean that they aren't going to be. It just means that they might be too soon out of residency to do it. It takes a couple years after residency. So I'm going to list references in the show notes and resources, and you can go down there and you can check and see if your doctor is board certified or board eligible. I don't want you to think, oh, well, I don't want somebody just out of training. They're not board certified yet. I will tell you, Physicians just coming out of residency training sometimes are way more up to date than those who've been out for years because they just finished their rigorous training. They are up to date on the most recent trends and evidence-based medicine. They've often done training in academic medical centers where things are challenging and they are seeing the most complicated cases. So some things that, you know, I felt the most comfortable with coming right out of residency, I don't anymore because I haven't managed it in 10 years. But back in the day when I was a young chickadee, I would have felt more experienced. So I don't think that, you know, a new doctor is not as valuable as somebody who's been out for 10 or 15 years. I think that there are both very different advantages to both of those kinds of physicians. Okay, let's transition now to if you're pregnant and you're looking for specifically an obstetrician, somebody to care for you in pregnancy and deliver your baby. What you're gonna to wanna to ask is where does your doctor deliver? If you have your heart set on delivering at a certain hospital and your doctor doesn't go there and do deliveries, well then that's probably not a good fit. So it's important to ask where your doctor delivers, how close is that hospital to you, that kind of thing. Another good question to ask is what is their C-section rate? But sometimes that number isn't super helpful because doctors who manage really high risk pregnancies might have a higher C-section rate than somebody who manages low risk pregnancies. So I think it's an important question to ask, but I wouldn't get so focused on the number but that can tip off into a conversation of, you know, what's your philosophy on managing labor? Do you offer trial of labors after cesareans or would I have to have a repeat C-section? That's a whole other topic and one we'll get into eventually, but it's just something to be thinking about in general. If you're pregnant and planning to breastfeed, it's a really great question to ask your potential OBGYN, what additional training do they have in breastfeeding? Because we get very little of that in residency, unfortunately, and I'm hoping that will change soon. But it's really important to know, do they have additional training or do they have somebody in their office, like a lactation consultant, that they can work with their patients or send their patients to? Do they have a good relationship maybe with a private practice lactation consultant? It's just really important to understand that because getting the most preparation you can before you deliver can really set you up for success after. And then after you deliver, it's important to know how comfortable your physician is with managing breastfeeding issues. And if they're not, it doesn't mean they're not going to be a good obstetrician or be able to deliver your baby, but it will just help you know, okay, after I deliver and if I have any breastfeeding questions, you know, maybe I should see what my pediatrician says or, or get help from a lactation consultant. Again, it's just about preparation. You may also want to ask if medical students or residents are involved. And this goes not only for the obstetric sides of things, but also the GYN side of things. If it is really important to you that there are no medical students or residents involved, then it's important to know when you schedule if they routinely go into the office or if they work in the hospital where you may deliver or have a GYN surgery. I will not dive into what I think of the pros or the cons are of that, but I will say that if you've got residents and medical students involved, in general, it means that your physician is somebody who is good enough to not only do their own job, but also teach others. And that is a very difficult thing to do and to do well. So these are usually physicians who are very talented. And I always think having extra brains on the case, especially when it comes to residents, can be a very good thing. But I can understand how some people may not feel that way. Rather than being surprised when you show up in active labor, ask before you schedule, because that may help make your decision of whether or not you want to go with a physician who works at an academic hospital versus a private practice, for example. <laughs> 
Okay, so take home messages here at the end. And as you can see, I have changed my scenery a little bit because my battery died. Okay, can we discuss how YouTubing is hard? For one thing, when you are picking an OBGYN, you deserve to feel seen and heard. So if you are seeing your doctor and you are just not feeling a connection, please know that it is always okay to change your doctors. And I hope that the tips here that I gave you today will help you when it comes to selecting your next doctor. What we talk about is really personal and we need to make sure that there's a connection, that you feel respected, that you never feel that you're ever made fun of or shamed. And so hopefully this YouTube will help as always, feel free to leave questions and comments down below. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln. And subscribe, like, and turn on the bell so you always know when I get a new YouTube app. All right, everybody. I hope that helped. Stay safe. Like my batteries die. Is this thing on? I need like a 16-year-old to help me with these things. Hello? Okay, bye. Wait, did I shut it? <laughs>